So good morning and welcome back to another video. Welcome to the channel if you see me for the first time. My name is Chris, I'm a landscape photographer from the UK. Today we've come to the coast on a very still but slightly flat November day. You see, on the east coast this time of year you very rarely get a day without any wind. So I've kind of decided to come out today, make the most of it, and we're going to do some long exposure photography, but we're going to do it with a twist. You see, we're going to take two photos of everything that we do. So we're going to put the ND filters on, we're going to take a long exposure photo, you know, flatten all the water out, give it that long exposure look. We're also going to take the filters off and we're just going to take a normal exposure. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend the water at home in Photoshop. And the idea of that is going to give the long exposure look in places, but with a low opacity, you'll get some of the motion and the waves coming through as well. So it might give it a bit of a unique look. So we'll start off the drinking dinosaur at Flamborough Head. Let's get someone set up and take the first photo. All right, so I've got a composition that I like. Uh, no real prizes for originality here. I've taken this photo a couple of times before and so have several other people. So we've got all the cliffs coming round, arcing round on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And then we've got the rock formation in the middle of the frame with all the little chalk beach and everything, all the waves, and some seals down there as well. So I'm thinking we might be able to do something with the seals. And we've also got the horizon placed on the top rule of third point. So we're gonna go ahead and take the long exposure photo first. So we're at ISO 100, F9, 30 seconds, using a 10 stop filter, and I'm overexposing this by two thirds of the stop. I'm also using a two second timer and a remote cable. So let's take the long exposure first. All right. So there's the first photo taken. Here's the ND filter, I'm gonna do the same again. So I'm keeping the ISO the same and I'm keeping the aperture the same. The only thing that's going to change here is the shutter speed, which is now down at a 25th of a second. Well, up at a 25th of a second, I suppose, because yeah, it'd be down with a filter on, wouldn't it? So let's take this one. Same again, remote, two second timer. There we go. And that's cool because we've got some seals in the water there. I was kind of hoping we could bring them through when we blend them. So there's the two photos taken. I'm gonna blend them. I'm going to show you now the final result. So for those of you that were paying attention at the start of the video and didn't just skip straight to the first image, I mentioned that there was no points for originality with my first composition. That guy on the cliff top is taking exactly the same photo that I've just taken. Good on you, son. All right, so I've moved across the cliff tops just a little way, and well, I sort of saw this from where I was before, but there's a little rock formation just sticking out of the water, just ever so slightly. And I kind of had this idea of shooting down onto it, using the ND filter to flatten and smooth all the water around it out but then painting the waves back in that are crashing over it. So you kind of get the long exposure around it, just this island with all these waves being all dramatic around it. Let's see if it works. So with photography, if you don't try something, if you don't make a mistake, you won't learn from it. So let's try it, let's have a look, see if it works. All right, so I've kind of angled this camera sort of down so you can see what I mean. So down there is the rocks, that bit there. That's the rocks that we're gonna shoot. So we've put the 10 stop ND filter back on. So we're at 10 stops, ISO 200 this time, F11 and 30 seconds. Again, we're using a two second timer with the remote shutter. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm going to take this photograph and I'm going to take one without the ND filter. I'm gonna keep the aperture and the ISO exactly the same. And hopefully we'll be able to catch it as a wave rolls across. So we'll be able to freeze the motion of the wave coming across it. And then like I say, nice smoothed out long exposure water around it. And hopefully it's going to work. And I should probably run through my weapon of choice today. It's the Canon 7D. I thought we've not used it in a while. We've not shown it on the channel for a while. So I thought let's bring it out and have a play with it. I'm not one of these people that's overly fussy about what camera I'm using. I just go out and have fun taking pictures and it's never really concerned me center size. So, oh, that's quite nice. Yeah, see, I like that. You see where the waves are crashing around at the back of it. You see all, all the white water around the back. That's really come through on the long exposure. It's really sort of streaked around and made some really nice patterns. Yeah, I quite like that. So let's take the filter off now. Yeah, just lift it up. Hopefully this camera's not going to move around too far. So there's a the filter out and I'll do exactly the same. Let's get an exposure level here. 25th of a second, ISO 200, F11 again, using the two second timer. And there we go, I'll do the same and we'll go blend them. Here's the final image. So 
I think what we're going to do now, we're going to head down into the cove. So we're going to head back towards Lighthouse and um, down into the cove. Because I want to try this um, sort of at eye level with the water. So see if we can't blend waves crashing around with smoothed out waves. The tide's sort of on its way out now, but we're going to have a couple of hours until the tide's really too far out to try this. So yeah, I think we're going to head back towards the cove. Wide angle lens, 16 to 35, maybe use the 10 to 18 since I have that with me. So I'm kind of a big fan of using the right lens on the right camera. So my 10 to 18 is a APS-C lens for the APS-C sensor. So it focuses all of the light onto the sensor, whereas the 10 to 18 is for the full frame cameras. And you lose a lot of light with the image circle not being cast exactly on the sensor. So I think that's what we're gonna do. So let's head down into the bay and pick it up. And when we get down there, let's go. All right, so we've made it down onto the beach and I really think this might work. You see all of this rock behind me, it's all sort of exposed seabed, but it has these great lines in it and they all lead out towards the sea and the horizon. And I'm really wondering if we can get down low and use them, just to exaggerate them, get some waves and some smoothed out water crashing around them. And it might look quite fun. I'm quite happy now we've got down here. So let's spend a bit of time, let's spend five minutes just walking around and just see if we can't find a composition, you see. This bit, it kind of leads out into the sea. There is a sea stack and some cliffs over in that direction, and there are some more cliffs over in that direction. But there isn't anything as a subject that's shouting out at me right now. So I'm just going to have to walk around and spend a few minutes really just trying to figure this out. So I'll catch up with you in a little while once we've found the photograph. So here's the kind of photograph that I'm thinking. So we have all of the lines leading out this way. We have the sea stack and the cliffs over there. I'm kind of thinking something like this, but probably roughly around here getting down low to the ground so we can get all the water crashing around and moving around and just aiming towards the cliffs over there in the distance so let's get a camera set up so this has really been one of them where i've kind of had to chase the tide out a little bit but i think we've kind of got somewhere where i'm happy with this so we've got all the bedrock in front of me and it's kind of leading out with some fingers towards the cliffs over in the background so we're starting off with the 10 stop filter so we're at 30 seconds f10 iso 200 and i'm using the remote again so Oh, by the way, thank you very much to Simon from work for giving me the remote for this. It's one that I didn't have, and Simon, who I work with, he, he likes cameras as well, he likes his drones and everything. He's kind of got similar interests to me, and he said that he's, uh, I don't know if he said it was his brother or brother-in-law was getting rid of all the camera gear, and he just happened to give me a bag full of it, and there was a remote in there that happened to fit my camera. So thank you very much, Simon. You've really made this long exposure stuff a lot easier for me. Obviously, it's easy enough using the, the shutter button on top of the camera with the timer, but there is a chance that things may wiggle and wobble. So using a remote, that really does help. Um, I just kind of realised something. You know where I've put you? You're in this photo. Oh dear. All right, so I've moved yet, and I took another photo. I've now removed the filter, so it's just time to take the standard exposure. So ISO 200, F10. 25th of a second. Let's go blend. So there we go, that was just a little bit of a different way of doing long exposure photography. It's not something I've ever tried before. I suppose you can maybe consider it something of a time blend. I don't know if that's a thing, but I kind of suppose that's what we're doing. We're blending short time and long time to create some sort of composite image. I know it's maybe not for everybody, a lot of people do like things to be done in camera, but well, I thought we'd go out and try something different. So I had a lot of fun doing this. It's nice to get back out to the coast. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been out. Um, my car got something that we'll call timing belt-itis and it started to sound like a sewing machine. So I didn't really trust the car. So we're all mended now, we're on the road again. Oh, and I fixed the heater matrix as well. So we've got heat as well, so. Yeah, it's a nice, quiet, non-sewing machine car now, and it's warm inside. So, um, yeah, I do hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed the images that I put out. If you did, please do give the video a thumbs up because it really does help the video and brings new views to see my content, which you can see every single week if you press the subscribe button down there. And with that being said, I'm going to love you and leave you and say peace and goodbye.